The Sustainable Built Environment National Research Centre is a unique blend of industry, government and research partners working across Australian industry with key links internationally. Whether you are a facility manager who has hands-on data and understanding what data mean or have nothing to do with the data aspect, this guide can guide you from A to Z on how to structure data, how to understand data. We hope that this could be a tool for facility managers on the ground to better make their way into structuring and understanding data as the world moves into a the technology area more and more. I'm Davina Rooney, the CEO of the Green Building Council of Australia, and it's such a privilege to partner on the Sustainable Procurement Project. It's a really important research program to look at all the different aspects and what we need to set industry up for more sustainability within the future. One of our targets is to produce greener concrete and concrete products. Three quarters of our concrete batch plants now have these reclaimers which separate the sand and the aggregate from return concrete from construction sites so it can be reused back into the production process. Main Roads makes payments in excess of two billion every year to its suppliers. Sustainable procurement can help us drive further benefits for social impact or environmental protection through our spending environmentally friendly products and products with lower environmental impacts. The livability project for BGC uh, really captured our interest and imagination. So the research was to develop a tool for all developers and people in the industry to use in the medium and high density affordable area. These projects that we've worked on through the livability framework have been targeted to demonstrate that we can produce a better product that is more livable, which is the basic aim of this thing, and is still affordable. This research is a very exciting culmination in a series of research projects. I want to commend the framework. I think it's going to take uh, the options for affordable and livable housing forward, um, and it's going to do it in a very accessible way for both industry and for government but most importantly for those not-for-profit organisations that are, have been um, leading the way in many ways. The construction and demolition industry gives us a great opportunity if we design buildings and infrastructure well from the outset that we can recover more, particularly around concrete, glass and steel. Because what these materials really are, uh, reused raw materials that we need to give second, third, fourth, fifth life and not be using natural materials. Effectively at the moment there is a strain on resources and so therefore the supply of raw materials is very difficult. A classic example is steel mesh for concrete. So what we've had to do is we've had to assist our customers by for example considering using steel fibres. The advantage is that they are using some recycled steel in there, so it's not just virgin material that's coming from China. This particular project was a, a case study on digital engineering and the use of data in decision making. We were able to mimic people, so our inspectors would do an inspection. We've also got the high-speed cracking data, which is the modern laser and, and camera technology. The outcome, we're looking at a, a future where we, we do less people, safer, and use a more, uh, I suppose, consistent measure through high-speed data and the analytics that we can use with the system. Being privileged to be chair of the project steering group, I can assure industry that the project was successful. This is largely brought about by a highly productive partnership among centre staff, industry and government agencies, supported by the excellent research capability of universities across Australia. So this, this research is about obtaining live real-time data from the location of the vehicles and the benefit for that can be seen from uh, probably three areas the transport operator themselves the community and then the supply chain 
knowing where the truck is, it actually enables the synchronization and orchestration of movement from ship to shore, shore to door. And I think that location has a benefit on those three um, AIS. By sharing that data, that opportunity for situational awareness in how we respond to the instant demands that occur in our network, for example, an incident that might occur on the network, that is definitely going to affect freight. Getting more value by having more access to a greater network of key players and key people who are well respected and I don't think otherwise um, I would probably have that access without SBNRC, to be honest. Most importantly as well, it allows for efficiency, standardised data formats, data exchange methods, everything we can do to drive down the risk of data being leaked or removed or accessed inappropriately and to drive down costs. This particular research was about linking road freight data with traffic management systems in real time to improve network outcomes. Because it is something that hasn't happened in Australia, that's been our biggest barrier when we talk about it to any level of government, is how do we know this can work? Um, and the simple answer from us has been, well, if no one ever tries it, we're not going to know that. I think the strength of the business case right the way through with levels of government has been the fact that local governments are on board with this right through the areas you've talked about. And again, you've been a conduit for that. And I think that's a key role that you'll continue to play in this, is making sure that the local governments are aligned with their vision. It's, you know, it's not about necessarily being the first, it's being part of something bigger. And, and one of the biggest selling points we've talked about for this is if we can show that this can work at a tenth of the cost or a fraction of the cost of a light rail project, then this is something that hopefully can be rolled out as best practice, not only throughout our own local governments in Western Australia, but around Australia. Most of the capital cities of Australia are building in a business as usual way that is leading to poorer cities. What would happen if we stopped expanding and came back in on ourselves? If we're going to accommodate an extra 5 million people in a city like Melbourne, you're going to need to go to reasonable densities. Here we have an eight-storey building sitting within the street, but to mitigate that height, it's set back from the street. Bringing together industry, government, research has never been more critical.